your state is 100% your responsibility right. at all times. So if I'm not in a good state, I gotta record videos, I just need 10 seconds and I will go, hur, hur, hur. Welcome back to the Empire Podcast Show. This is the first time for a second time. Second timer, Jason Capital. Welcome back to the show, my man. That's right. This is the first time we've had somebody on for the second time, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. So, Jason, why don't you give us a real quick rundown? You know, people have met you before. Real quick rundown. Uh, you know, you've joined the Eight Figure Empire Club. So, tell us about how business is going, who you're serving, what you're doing. Sure. So, um, what I do now is I help people replace rat race life with laptop life, as you've seen me say many times on Instagram. And they have modeled it once, once or twice. twice. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is what I do. That is my focus right now. Um, I have, uh, we do a lot of stuff on Instagram, a lot of stuff on YouTube, yep. um, a lot of stuff with webinars, a lot of paid acquisition on media and stuff like that. And then I'm starting to actually branch out and put my hands in different other co cookie bee jars. Or, Get my hands in other cookie jars, excuse me. Get your, your hands in other sushi rolls. Sushi so rolls. We so definitely have a sushi tonight, right? We are. Awesome, awesome. All right, yeah. so, so listen, listen, there, we're gonna have like two phases, two levels uh, to this interview. Is one, cool. we're gonna talk about the foundation stuff. I mean, you, as a young man, it's very uncommon for someone of your age or your interest to be so invested in studying the masters and the greats. So we're gonna talk about that and really open up people's eyes of all ages to who you should study. And then we're gonna get into some nitty gritty granular stuff about the magic that you're working on the social media. So the really, the really cool thing is, is that we're celebrating a decade of knowing one another. And I like to describe this. Can we, as, can we hug it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our mics might touch, but I know I don't want to blow that up. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's I so was cool. describing as the decade of decadence uh, for you, decade of dominance. So, <laughs> so we met when you were 19 years old, and I want you to explain how you are different now compared to back then, on high level and and regular yeah. stuff too. So, uh, first of all, 10 years has been that's insane, it's right? Incredible. Um, we met at an underground marketing event held by Yannick Silver, yeah. so shout out to Yannick for having the event. Yeah. And, you know, well, actually explain why you went there. So you must have been same in your ambitions back then, but then how you've evolved over the 10 years. Well, so. And what that can mean for. So when I, when I went there and we met, I was at Michigan State. I was in college, but I knew I didn't want the normal life that all my friends were, were going towards with their degree. So I was looking for ways, like, how do I make money? in any other way. My motivation, this is something that's changed, my motivation then was, it was not to make money. I didn't need money, I don't care about money, I just wanted to play basketball, right? Yeah, yeah. I just didn't want a normal life or a normal job, and so I needed to find a way just to make enough so that I could spend my time doing what I actually wanted to do. You were already getting out of rat race life with laptop life, so. I, I knew rat race wasn't for me when right. I was nine. Literally yeah, yeah. nine. My, I remember my dad would wake me up for school every morning. Who it's like he's got work to do, and he's taking time away to wake his son up and get him ready. And I would be mean to my dad, <laughs> and then and because you know you're waking up, dad, yeah, just yeah. let me sleep. And I'd say I told my dad, when I get older, I will never have an alarm clock when I wake up. I will wake up when I want to wake up. I don't know how, but that's that was like got my it. goal, right? I knew I didn't want this. I have to. It was just right funny. now. Now that we wake up with an alarm clock very early now. Sure, sure, but. So that, that was like, the freedom to choose that alarm. Of clock course, time. yeah, you're not yeah. forced. So, uh, when I went to that event, I, did, I had an ebook for basketball that wasn't selling, and, and I didn't know like how to make this work. And I met you, and I met a couple other people at that event. And me and you sat down, and, and you wrote on a napkin for me. A lot of people have heard this story, like yeah, yeah. what to do. And I just I just followed the instructions. I, would, I didn't try and outsmart my teacher, and I took the napkin home, and uh, you know I was making twenty grand a month the very first month when I got back to school. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, which which was great. So like biggest difference you asked between you know me then and me now, I think, just I was very innocent back then. I don't want to say like I'm not innocent anymore, sure. but but there's just very so much so I'm much. Surprised that, you're not wearing white, all white. Yeah, I mean I was a dating coach for many years, right? Yeah. Like like there's uh, all white. <laughs> have dogs floating around right, or something. Right. Yeah, I uh, I just I've. I always talk about like when I'm teaching younger people or anyone how to make money, it's all about high income skills, right? We talk about, and the big three to me are copy, closing, and speaking. And a lot of that has yeah, to yeah. do with uh, influence and persuasion and, and power speaking. biases and power speaking and power influence and triggers and all this stuff that compels people to do things that is below the conscious level and knowing how to market and speak and, and, and persuade to those things. Well, I'll, let me stop you right there Please. for a second. So back before I read your book, High Status, and saw you speak at Fitness Business Summit about it, I used to get really excited and kind of talk with this high, whiny voice. <laughs> and I still uh, do sometimes. But today, so many people 
will send me direct messages and go, like just randomly go, wow, you got a really great radio voice. And, and I learned how to you know, move where the voice comes from. Mm -hmm. And that then gives me more authority yes. and allows me to convert more sales. And I know some people are sitting there going, that's ridiculous, but it is so darn true. And that's the power speaking stuff that you teach. It's not just the words, it's the tonality, the pace, the pitch, the tone, all that sort all of that stuff. stuff. Yeah, because people, they're not buying the message as much as they're buying the messenger. Oh, I like that. And how you speak conveys everything about you. Like if I was up here talking and I was talking up here and it was like weird, <laughs> like the, it, you would think differently about me. Whereas, yeah. so a, a, a more resonating voice where the tonalities are shifting, you're holding people's attention, you got them on the edge of their seat. You know, there's so many things we can do with our voice. And it just, like I remember back in school, you probably had this too, where there would be a sign on the wall and it would say, use your indoor voice right. we've been you know or you're at dinner with your parents and you speak up because there's family friends there and they turn to you and they go don't raise your voice when the adults are speaking or things like that right, we're right, taught right. and we're sort we're, we're neutered. taught to we're neutered, neutered to keep that, yeah, we're right. neutered at, at a really young age to, uh, to to not express ourselves and this is such a powerful tool that everyone has the ability to like get into like the average person this is true they speak 12 minutes a day like, how are you going to get good at speaking when you talk only 12? Like, you know, that's the, crazy. 12 minute abs, not a real thing. 12 minute power voice, not a real thing. Like, we need you speaking. I have my students speak 60 minutes every single day, right. every day, just to practice, get the reps. And like, you were doing it already because you speak to so many experts. Well, you know. the 300 podcasts that I did promoting my book made me as I was actually telling uh, Asher, one of our, uh, our guys here, is that he's like, you know, you guys really have this nailed down. And it's because, yeah, I've done literally the 10,000 hours, you know, the 300 podcasts. And the way that I describe it is now when I speak, there's all the things I can do, the up and down. I've studied everything from pastors to Louis C.K. Because who, those guys hold audiences, sure. right? And they shift from, I'm telling a story about this, and now I somehow segue into another story that's funny as heck, but about something totally different. Yep. I'm like, man, i got to study those guys. And by doing that and by doing the podcast, I was able to now, I say that my brain is three seconds ahead of what comes out of my mouth. Mm. And I'm also able to avoid the ums and ahs mm -hmm. that most people... When you see somebody speak, and even if they're a great speaker, if they're umming and ahhing, you're like, oh my gosh, this is kind of boring, you lose the attention. But if I'm not sure what to say, I will just drag things out like that. And it was by doing the podcast and the hours and hours and hours and hours of repetition and getting some feedback and going through the virtuous cycle loop, as I call it, I was able to do it. And a lot of that was through what I, I read from you, but also what I model from you because you're one of the few people who I watch on Instagram because you know what you're doing. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. No problem. And, and dude, your transformation, it, it's awesome. Like you're speaking now is not not just my hair transplant, but actually no. You, your hair is is majestic and yes. and it makes me smile inside. But <laughs> but you no, your speaking is like kick ass now. You are top one percent, dude. Yeah, and it's also I am really more excited about this stuff that I speak about. Yes. But also realizing, hey, when you go up to speak, and this is really great advice for everybody at home, because most people when they go up to speak, they're like, oh my gosh, what are these people thinking of me? And I'm so worried. And now I'm really you know inside my own head, and I got to read off the slides and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. You have to understand that when, when you go to a presentation, nobody sits in the audience and goes, man, I really hope this person sucks. Yep. Like they're all there and they all think that because you're on an elevated stage that you're some guru. And if you can just come and be entertaining and deliver some energy to them and also teach them a couple of really great nuggets, you're gonna, you're gonna blow people away, yeah. which is what you guys do all the time. Well, and you remember the audience, like you said, they're not there for you. Like when I'm on stage, even at my own event, I even tell my audience at the summit, like, hey, just see, like, I am aware. Best audience ever, by the way. Best audience I'm ever. I am aware, they're not, I tell them, you're not here for me. You're here for yourself, right. as you should be. So as the speaker, it takes a lot of pressure off you to realize, oh, I don't need to be some magical person on stage. They're here for themselves. If I can just give that energy, share a little bit, help them in some way, then they're gonna, like, they show up and, and they're like, I hope he's good. I hope she's good. Like they want you to succeed, they're on your side. Yeah, 100%. So if you're a real estate agent, if you're a speaker yourself, if you're a coach, if you're a trainer, anything, you just need to have this power speaking stuff and these simple skills. And that's what you're teaching at Perfect Life Retreat, my, my big yes. event. Yeah. He's my keynote speaker, the, the, the student becomes the master after all these years. And so wanna see you there. Bedros is gonna speak as well. It's gonna be all the Empire crew. Sharon's gonna be there. It's gonna be really great. PerfectLifeRetreat.com, November 8th and 9th in San Diego. So. Walk us through like how this can change somebody's life, not just in sales, but in personal relationships as well. Totally. Well, 
so I have a unique background in this in that I was a dating coach for men for, for several years. Basketball coach to dating coach. Basketball to dating is what I do now. Yeah. And so I spent a lot of time working with guys who wanted to become more attractive to the opposite sex. And the thing we'd always work on, I never taught them cheesy pickup lines right. or like, like that was never what it was about. It was about developing you as a man and your character and your personality. And the greatest force multiplier that, that we had for these guys was their voice. It'd be body language and voice, like those were the big things. So when we worked on those things, we'd find out not only could they then attract the, the type of girlfriend or wife that they wanted, but they would get promotions at work. Gee. They would go to the nightclub and instead of waiting in the GA line, they'd just get whisked away to the front. That's sweet. They just found, they, you order at Starbucks and the girl just smiles at you a little bit more as she hands you your mocha frappuccino latte. Whatever, right, 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 right. So like how many days a week do we use our voice? All of them. Right. right, everyone that ends in Y, <laughs> yeah. we, are, we are talking. And so if we have this thing here and we're using it every day, doesn't it make sense that we should probably get good at using it? So anyone who talks, period, should be working on their speaking, should be working on their voice. What, you know, one of the things I love about you is that you study the history, the past, the, the titans. Who was it that you started, like, that caught your attention on this mindset and then that you went to study and learn from and how did you, you know, put it into your little system that you have that people can use in so many things. So the first VSL I ever produced was when I was doing the dating stuff. Got and it. we launch it and sales are tanking immediately. That's when I, you know, you line up all the affiliates and they mail and the numbers are low. That's like a you, bad right. position to be in, right? And I hit up John Benson because I ah. knew he like, I remember I talked to him at some point and he mentioned something about tonality, like it just, a seed was planted. Yeah. So I hit him up and I said, John, this thing's not converting. Could we work on it, fix the tonality? Uh, he listened to it. He goes, you sound angry in this VSL. Oh, interesting. And I probably was, right? I was like, I was yelling at the guy. I'm like, you need to live better, right? right. <laughs> and he- Okay, I will. <laughs> I'll buy it. All right, fine, just stop yelling at him. Yeah, seriously. So I was like, dude, can, can we work on this? Yes, uh, how much? And he goes, it's $4,000 uh, for an hour. And I think I had $4,500 or something like that in my wow. whole entire account. And I was like, well, screw it. I have nothing else to do. Like, sure. let's do this, right? So I sent him the money. And I was living in Santa Monica. And I went all the way to Malibu where he lived. And I, he actually spent like two and a half hours with me. Wow. We re-recorded the whole VSL. But I re-recorded it with him standing over my shoulder. And he would correct me every few sentences. Hey, say this, say it this way, move your this way, change your cadence like this. And that was the first time where I was like, holy crap. I changed one little thing. It sounds like, like the emotion the, the, the viewer feels is totally different. That's amazing. And it, so it, that, it was from the very beginning, I knew that there was something. And of course, we relaunched the VSL very next day and conversions more than double. Wow. Amazing. All we changed was tonality. So, so before we jump into like other people that you study from history, the one thing that I love that you do is that you are super quick to quit things or change things. And most people, they try and like get you know, water from a stone or something like that. So let's talk about what you are not doing. Mm. So you know, whether it's some of the, the courses and stuff, like you don't push your high status stuff uh, you know, book as much because you found something that converts better. Mm -hmm. So when do you say, okay, listen, it's time to move on from this or how can we re-engineer what it is? I'm very, very quick to, to change stuff when it doesn't work, as you said, because I, my entire thought process and decision making is, is fully based on, as Warren Buffett would say, the correctedness of my analysis. Okay. What people think or what people don't think has zero influence over the decision. So some people will start an offer or a push or a promotion and it doesn't sell and they go, well, I gotta, I gotta keep pushing it, otherwise Sunk cost. someone's I gonna put notice. all this time and energy into it. Of course, right? I will just drop it. Right, right, like an egg over a skillet. Like, I'll just drop it, I don't yeah. care. And then I'll go on and I'll test the next thing. Like, I know, like to me, this whole game is about how fast can I learn, yeah. right? Like, I, I need to build a machine, I get that, some sales automated type machine, but I'm only gonna do that just by learning, it, just testing and testing and testing and testing. And I wanna experiment with so many different things because the more I fail elegantly, the faster I'm gonna learn. And that learning advantage is what's gonna give me that advantage over my competition. So, so somebody who's in your world, one of your students, and they're like, man, you know, something's not working right now, and they have limited resources. How do you tell them like, hey, listen, here, here's like how you gotta go and experiment and figure things out. Like what yeah. would you say to those people? So for those people, typically I would check one of two things. Let's say it's an IG agent, yep. and they're trying to get clients and they can't get clients. I would need to look at, the two things I'd look at is their state and then their strategy, okay. like both of those things. So in IG agent, in that course, it's I think 12 hours of training. The first two hours we spend entirely on state. 
like it's an Instagram course and we don't talk about Instagram at all for the first two hours because I've been doing this long enough to know that no one is gonna succeed with a business opportunity of any kind if they are not in the right state mentally and physically, energetically. I need to build them up first so that they can take the strategies and when they go and talk to the doctor or the yoga instructor or the e-com store, they don't sound like a loser. Right. They sound like an expert, they sound sharp, they sound like a figure of authority. So I need to work on those things with them first. So if someone, like let's say they can't get clients, I'm gonna check one of those two things. Well, how are you coming off? Like your state, your status. Because I know I've been I've been contacted by a few of them, and contacted by a few people, you know, a bunch of people in a whole bunch of industries, and mm -hmm. you can tell when somebody's coming in riding a wave of rejections. Yes, and you're like, <laughs> Eeyore, yeah, it's like Eeyore the donkey trying to sell me on something. It's yes. never gonna work. Right, you gotta be Tigger. Eeyore is selling you like it'll put a pep in your step. I yeah, promise. No, yeah, you're like no. no, right. And then I have other. So I've been. There's a true story. I, uh, I have a buddy. Um, you you know him. Runs a fifty million dollar a year company. And an IG agent of mine reaches out to him and just says, hey, I love what you're doing, but I notice you're not very good at Instagram. You should hire me as your IG agent. I will, I will 10X your business for you. And my friend is sitting there and he's like, this is how I get to 500 million. Like, like I've been trying so hard to figure it. I just needed a random person on Instagram. Right. They're gonna 10X my business for right. me. And he's 21 years old. Yeah, and, he, so, like, so, and that's, so I said, state, that's strategy. Right, that's not a good strategy. What I teach all my agents in, the, in this regard is lead with the giving hand and then just give and give and give. It just guilt them with your givingness. Like, give them value. Give them seven days of scripts for your stories. Give them seven days of captions. Just give it to them. Yeah. At some point, if they use it and they get a positive result, they will come back to you and they'll want to work with you. Yeah, that's the totally opposite of the scarcity mindset. You know, I got to go and get this person. I'm not going to give them anything. But that doesn't get you anywhere. That doesn't get you anywhere. I mean, we know this, like, in every area of life. And I even tell them, I'm like, yo, like, when someone reaches out to you and is just like, hey, you're not good at this, you should hire me for it, <laughs> are you, are you, How do you like them? Do you want to, no. So why, why would you, you know, why would you think it would work any differently? Yeah, all right. So all right. let's, let's switch gears now to the foundational stuff. So, you know, you're a David Ogilvy guy, you're a Charlie Munger guy, and, and you study all these billionaires and you're just reading Titan. And, and so why do you go to these people and who should, you know, if you were to pick a couple people, who should the people at home be starting with right now? I, I personally have never found that I've gotten a lot out of the trending bestseller books. Sure. I don't know if you've, have you had a similar experience? Well, I mean, like the Shoe Dog book was really great, but only in a, like, hey, listen, look how much everybody has to go through. And, I, and so when somebody comes to me and says, hey, listen, I, you know, it's been three weeks and I'm not at 10 grand a month yet. I'm like, you need to re shoe dog and realize like the guy was broke for 18 years before it became a billion dollar company. Yes. So there's sometimes, you know, some of that stuff for sure. Yeah. But definitely if you want to go to somebody who's, who was the first person to do something and persevere through something and figure it out with that empire thinking, you know, the people that you go to are totally Yeah, different. yeah, well, so like the, the best-selling books, in my opinion, a lot of them could just be articles. Yeah, always, six-page articles. Almost all of them could be articles. So I'm not gonna spend too much time reading those, I'll skim through those. I like the, the masters, the ideas that have lasted generations. Like, like, there's a few key ideas, I think, that get passed down from generation to generation that actually, they survive for a reason. And those are the ideas I wanna get close with. Those are the ideas I wanna really understand. And that's why like a guy like Charlie Munger is, is so great. I mean, he has lasted centuries or generations right, himself. He's like 95 years he's old. He's like 95 and he's still ticking. Um, and thinking sharply. Incredibly sharply, yeah. Uh, so like Munger, I love. Ogilvy is great. But then Benjamin Franklin is a hero of mine, right? I love to read the, the Isaacson biography on him. The Steve Jobs biography I think is the great. Greatest American is, is that the greatest American? The Benjamin Franklin one? The title of it? The first American? The first I think, American. I think it's the first American. Yeah. Yep. And so like those types of ones, and then uh, like Titan, right? Rockefeller. Yeah. That book was unbelievable. I get so much more out of following the trail, like the breadcrumbs of someone's life, the whole thing from start to finish, than these little snippets that we get in articles or Instagrams or these these you know nonfiction books that come out now. Like oh, that, yeah. that book, Titan, was Unbelievable! All right, so, I got so, so much. From what, that. what was like, man? Because like, I know you've mentioned some of this stuff in your Instagram stories. Like, yeah, the, the, that's what I love about some of your Instagram stories. Like, hey, I'm going to teach you something from the past. It's a principle, a timeless principle, and you're teaching this mostly to to younger guys. Like, awesome that this knowledge is being passed down, whether or not they go and and follow up and do their own research. But what are some of the things that really stuck out to you from those things? 
one was the series of bullshit Rockefeller had to go through to build his empire in the first place. And it, so, like, to me, it invokes contrast bias because we live in this instant gratification, like, Instagram world. I'm not making 10 grand in three weeks. Your shit sucks. Uh, like I've that. been a real estate agent for three months and I'm not on 100K. I haven't now I'm going to go yeah. do something else. <laughs> oh my gosh, please don't quit. So, following someone and watching them get punched in the face every day for like 20 years straight before they, the empire is like an empire, it, it gives you perspective. Well, it's on, like on the you, Phil the Knight thing. thing too. Yeah, it's the Phil Knight thing. Like, dude, there was a biography I read on Alexander the Great. I read this five or six years ago. And it was just like 500 pages of he woke up, he picked a new country he wanted to take over. He went there, he took it over. New country, took it over. New country, took it over. And every step of the way, he's getting his ass kicked. People are dying. But he just got up every day and was like, nope, we need to keep going. We need to keep conquering. And there's not one battle from that book I could tell you about. I don't remember any right. of them. But what I remember is that he started here in Greece, and he went all the way to India, and he conquered everything on the way. And there was so much arrows and bullshit he had to deal with on the way that he just kept going. Wow. And that, for me, gave me such juice and perspective on what I'm doing. It's like, okay, we have this vision of this place we want to go. He, he went from Greece to India on a horse and killed everyone <laughs> on the way, right? right? Like, I, I think I can build this company. I think I can do this. Hey, let's go back to when you were 19. How, was, how does your vision at 19 differ from your vision <laughs> at now? And not just in terms of, like, the actual details, but in the scope of it. Like, the, oh, my gosh, I'm capable of this compared to what you thought you were capable when you were 19. When I was 19, my goal was just to make $1,000 a day uh -huh. and have a cool apartment and uh, a housemaid who cut up fresh organic fruit for me every morning. Like my dream was, I'm near an ocean and I wake up and I come to the kitchen and it's just pineapple and berries and mangoes and it's just freshly sliced, but she's gone. She already did it, so I don't have this year. Got it. That was like the dream. Okay. I hit that very, very young, right? And it, it, that's, that's cool, but at the same time, once I hit that, it was like, well, where do I go from here? And that was when I actually backtracked, started hanging out with some of the wrong people. Got it. And uh, you know, I moved back home to my mom's basement, right? Now, the, the, the big thing that's changed with the vision is it, before the vision was about me, and now it's, it's not about me at all. I, it's, I don't want any acclaim. I don't need any of that stuff. It's entirely about things that I believe in that I want to share more with the world. One of them, I was being interviewed yesterday, that I want to do, which is unrelated to, to any of this stuff, is I want to throw the biggest yoga festival the world's ever seen. Just because I want to, I believe yoga is uh, it's such a mindful thing where we can raise people's consciousness, not in like the, the foo fooey way, but like genuinely make them more mindful, more conscious. Well, you were talking about awareness in one of your Instagram stories from totally. Power of Yoga. Yeah, yeah. That's like the Untethered Soul. You've read that book? Yes. Okay, yeah. right. See, the point of yoga is awareness. Like if you're walking down the street and you look in a yoga class, you think it's body weight exercises. But if you're in the class, you know that's it's not calisthenics. This is a mindful, this is a meditation. Right. So I want to, like, I want to get the whole world, like, doing downward dog and they're sitting here and they're like, why the fuck am I doing this? <laughs> but then they're also like, it feels so good. I don't want to stop. Like I want to, I just want to, that's one thing I want to share. Got it. Get that out okay. there more. All right. And you also want to help so many people. Yeah. You know, it's not just a phrase, replace rat racing. Come no, it's, it's real. We've, stuff, so we've helped 78 people in the last four months. The big mission for what I'm doing with this stuff is I want to create a hundred millionaire students in the next three years. Okay. That's, that's the, I want to help create a hundred. So we started four months ago. We've got seven millionaire students so far. Got it. So we're, we're humming along, but 93 in the next 32 months, I got my work cut out for me. Well, I mean, it all spirals up from here. Totally. For sure, right? When yeah. you put that foundation in place and the more people and that's... Oh, no, we'll, we'll do it. It's just... Well, this, I mean, is, this is what thousand. I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Perfect, perfect. All right, so that then is like an external vision, mission yeah. to you. And do you find like when you have that perspective on things that now it's easier to get people into the world and now it's like... Oh my gosh! If I just would have been this way in the first place, I would have been better off. What do you What do you mean? It, well, it, it, does it galvanize people? Like, oh my gosh, this is what he's about. I'm going to join that mission or that mission. Now, now that I have, yeah, it's like so. Like Elon Musk wants to take people to Mars. Yes, that brings on a whole lot more people than I want to make a nice looking car. Totally. Yeah. yeah so. I am aware that in marketing, everyone should have a mission yeah. that they believe in, but it's also the external mission that they wear out for the public. They, yeah. they show the public. So when I say I'm on a mission to create 100 millionaire students, I am aware there are people in their own brain who are going, I want to be one of his millionaire students. Right, because they want the recognition because that they want the recognition more than they want the millionaire status. Oh, of course. Right? Well, so in, in marketing, it's more important that we sell to role than benefit. Okay. See, the old paradigm Break that is, down. Break that down. Yeah, the old paradigm is, is you know, don't sell features, sell benefits. Right. Well, I, I want to take it a level up and say, don't even sell benefits, sell role. 
who are they, like this is the old Jim Rohn quote, it's not what you get, but who you become. Oh, people yeah. are more interested in, in who they're gonna be than what they're gonna get. People only wanna be a millionaire or have a million bucks because of the status they perceive they will have in the domains of their life, family, friends, work, social easy, community, so online, cool. et cetera, yeah, so. It's like the irony, the more money you get, the more free stuff people give you, the more like, yes. here, have it. But, but they don't even want the free stuff, they just wanna be one of the few who gets the free stuff. Right, it's right. it's the, the lucky person club, right? Yeah. This is why like when I'm marketing, it's better for me to say, be my next millionaire student versus become a millionaire. Millionaire student right. sounds so much better. I've given you a role to live up to, something, uh, an aspiration that you're moving towards. Right, because just... when they go to high status, they're like, oh my God, that's there's that guy. And so now that person is famous in a small group Totally, of yeah, they, yeah they, they can see all that stuff. So like, be one of the first, be one of the few, et cetera. Like different roles you can give to people. Even like Russell with ClickFunnels, yeah. you're a funnel hacker. Right, like that's a role. It's a, it's an identity for people to have that they want to aspire to. Well, you and I have been to Dan Kennedy events, and whether yes. or not, you know, like Dan's not doing well or whatever, but um, or is 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 passed away. But you know, Dan would have people stand up at events. Like he would say, "Okay, who here has spent five thousand dollars with me?" And everybody would stand up, and then it would go to like over a hundred thousand dollars, and you could tell people wanted to stay standing because they wanted the recognition from the man up on stage. Yes. And it's like, I've been here for 25 years and I spent $323,000. Now, the more you spend, the great thing about Dan's stuff, the more you spend, the more, in most cases, you've made. Yes. And that's why you're spending so much. Yes. But it was interesting to see, like, everyone kind of become a little, a little kid. Like, teacher, give me recognition, give me a gold star. Yep. But that goes back to the whole role thing. Because yep. most, of those, most of the people in, in that world, they were not, like, fancy millionaires they mm -hmm. were just you know salt of the earth like kansas uh, you know state millionaires mm -hmm. and it wasn't about the money it was about the freedom and 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 the american lifestyle that they were always aspiring to the american dream they yes. got it through the money but it was more like i want to have this as like the money in the bank wasn't really a big thing to them yeah and and my hypothesis is that a lot of those guys who were standing up i spent 50 i spent 75 grand with dan that's a huge motivation for them to spend more Right, to make sure at the next event when he asks his question, they've moved up. They're not in the 75 club, they gotta be in the 100 club. So how does time. everybody else use this? You know, we know how you use it, and I know how I use it, and you know, we're talking about these other experts that use it, but how does somebody who's a real estate agent use this? How does somebody who's a nutrition coach use this? How does somebody who's building a supplement company use this? Sure, well, so let's say it's a nutrition coach and yeah. you do transformations for people through their diet. Well, then maybe you have the, I don't know, if, you're, if it's guys, maybe it's the six pack club, yep. right? Or maybe it's the- total. Little back, black dress club is something. The little, the little black dress club, for, yeah. For our Fit Body Boot Camps, that's what we do. That's perfect, yeah. So you have a club for it, and you have to, which obviously do something to get in the club, and, okay. but you pimp out the club to everyone else. You hold, like, you hold these disciples up as the standard that everyone else should aspire to. Right. And they see these people getting the validation and getting the recognition and that's, that's what's gonna motivate them. So you're actually helping them achieve the transformation they want in the first that's place using like this what, marketing tool. So we both have co Coach Taki Moore, and yes. doesn't he do that with like black belts or something? Yeah, it's a little, and he'll tell you, it's a little convoluted because there's a lot of belts and it's hard to keep track of, but yeah, but yeah I, I think, I, truthfully, I think Taki could simplify it to just like three levels because he's got like nine belts now. Got it. I think every 10 grand there's a new belt, okay. but that's exactly what it is, right? It's, it's as you go up to a certain level, you wear a different belt. I mean, And there's a ceremony about it. Yes. Because it's not just, uh, okay, here, here. Yeah. Gonna, and in, so in, in boardroom, right, which is the group I'm in, at the end of every boardroom event, there's uh, the blade. Oh, right. It's handed out to the guy who's had the best transformation in that group. And these guys, they're all running, you know, multi, multi million dollar businesses. They're like, oh, they just want the blade. Right. More than the money, they want the blade. It's, it's very, very interesting to, to see that. But I mean, you know this, like, like money's only, it's just whatever. Like, well, you it, know what Napoleon said, right? What did he say? Napoleon said that when he found out that men will die for ribbons, that yes. was like that was like a huge yes. game changer. For yes, him. men will die for a ribbon. Yeah, and for recognition. Okay, so so speaking of Napoleon, now we get back to the the people that have power, that have influence. And you recently interviewed Robert Greene, the author of the Forty Eight Laws of Power. It's forty eight, right? Mm -hmm. And then what was the forty ninth one? There is none. Oh, so it was a 50th one he did with 50 cents. He skipped 49 for mystery. Oh, okay, got it. It's a great <laughs> intriguing mystery around it, yeah. Okay, great. So, so you recently <laughs> interviewed him, yeah. and without you know, giving away the, the entire thing, it's a YouTube video you have on your channel, but like, what were some of the big takeaways you had? Maybe even not from what he said, but how he operated. So first thing I noticed, because we did an interview at his house, was books. 
everywhere. I've known a lot of people who are like really into, he is really into books. I'll tell you that the biggest thing I took away was the amount of research he does for the work that he creates. Okay. He's not trying to race through to create a course or something. He wants to create great pieces of work and expression. And whether people love him or not, he can't control that, but he wants to create the best thing he can. There's a, okay. there's a strong dedication to mastery that I really, really vibe with. So book is brought. art to him. It is, it is the art, yeah. yeah. And so he's working on his new book, Sublime. Right? That's, I think that's the, the working title about uh, engineering more peak experiences in your life. Okay. So, and, and what can happen to your brain. And so he goes, yeah, I'm working on it. I was like, how long do you think until it's ready? Four years. Okay, why? Well, in my room right now, I have 106 books stacked up right now that I have to read as part of the research. And he's already read, I think, a couple hundred books already. He will read 300 to 500 books to write one book. So it's almost like he goes through not just one, but two Olympic cycles before he writes a book. Before he writes a book. Right. Like, most, like if you think about, oh my gosh, this person takes four years to compete in one event, this guy's taking eight years to write one book. Double. Yeah, right. Like, that's the 100 meter sprinter, right? We'll spend four years training to run 10 seconds. But Robert Green, in like a 100 meter dash, yeah. Robert Green will spend six or eight years studying and researching. Which, one which book. makes Walter Isaacson, the guy who writes all those biographies, like that much more amazing because yeah. he pumps those things out really fast. Yes. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Amazing. All right. So you learned that. You saw that. Yep. And, and I think there's two different things that you can learn from somebody. You can learn from what they say, but also in how they operate. Mm -hmm. So I, I know you were taking a screenshot of like where he wrote the 48 Laws of Power. And it, was, and it looked like a rinky-dink little desk. So what did you learn like from that environment that he put himself in in order to succeed? Well, of course, I think it should speak to anyone here who's like, I'm in the wrong environment for my work or negative influences or whatever, or crab in a bucket. Like, he wrote 48 Laws of Power. He wrote all these amazing books that have sold tens of millions of copies at a rinky-dink table with a little, a little like laptop stand. That's it. But what's key is that, so it doesn't matter where you are or where you're at, you can create something masterful no matter, where, like, no matter where you are. He did it, just it's a basic table. It's not like he's got some amazing office and a team of eight research people. Like, it's just him, wow. right? And the other part of it is that he has the same ritual and routine for the writing. It's the same Take place. me through this, because I'm, I'm a big sucker for routines and rituals. Yeah, well, no, his, his is very simple. So he gets coffee. Yep. I think, I believe it's coffee or what tea. What does he write? I don't know. That's, okay. that's a really good, I should ask that question. Uh, but he gets he gets coffee or tea, yeah, and he just that's it. Like once he makes that, he knows that's his sign. All right, it's time to write. So it's him, and it's always his cat. Okay. His cat is always with him when he's writing. In fact, the screensaver on his phone was a picture of his cat, not his girlfriend. There you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. So when you're creating stuff, though, like you're always in these amazing environments, whether you're in Puerto Rico, whether you're in Thailand, whether you're in Vietnam with the elephants or whatever, <laughs> you're in these great places. Most of the time you're getting great ideas there, but when you're not, how do you get in the right state to get the right ideas so that people who are listening who are like, man, I'm not in Thailand riding elephants to Vietnam, so what do I do? For, for ideation? Yeah. So, one, the elephants Even are Even creating cool. your daily stories. Yeah. Like, yeah. you gotta get the energy up, and you know yes. you're a master of changing states. So, yeah, like Thailand, like you don't need to go to Thailand or Vietnam to get ideas, right? You don't need to go to the Himalayas and meet some guru on the top of a mountain who's gonna share a fortune cookie with you and on the piece of paper in the fortune. Well, that's where Bulletproof Coffee says, got says go back you know. home, right? <laughs> it did. The top of a mountain? Well, in Tibet, that's where he Is that right? Yeah, because he was there and they were drinking the Yaks coffee stuff. That's a good backstory. So there you go. Yeah. So sometimes you will get one there, but you don't have to go there. Yeah, let, let's not bet on the Himalayas for right. your breakthroughs. So two things that I think are really important. One, there's a great book. Have you read A Technique for Producing Ideas? No. Little baby book, 30 pages written 60 years ago. I think it's the best book on how to actually create ideas. And he talks about five steps into this process. And it's... Who it's, was it? It's I, I, James something. I don't remember his name, actually. Okay. Uh, technique for producing ideas. But he talks about how you, when you're looking for an idea, it's basically just a few phases. First is like the research where you gather up all the, the information that you possibly can. Like, yeah. like take it all in and then really like think hard. Like, try, like actually try to think up the idea. We know that you, you don't think of big ideas, they appear before you. Sure. But you try hard and you really you almost nudge it, you almost force it. And then when you think you can't think anymore, you stop, you let it go, and then you go do other things. And at some point during those other things, you can count on the fact that this mechanism will will give you the idea. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Hemingway. I'm a, big, I'm a big Hemingway guy. And Hemingway would stop in the middle of a sentence or something for his writing and come back the next day. Yes. 
I, I love that technique, by the way. Okay. So yeah, so for me, for coming to ideas, it's two things. One, it's the research. Like I need to be taking in information from a lot of places. I love Dan Kennedy's quote, you can't have new material without raw material. Yeah. So I need a lot of raw material coming in and I get that from mostly books. I don't spend a lot of time like flipping through websites and stuff. I don't sure. find that useful. So a lot of books, conversations with great people like you helps me a lot also and, and studying what my competition is doing. Yep. So I take in a lot of research. Um, I do all that stuff. And then the second thing for ideas is state. Right, I will, like one of the things I've always noticed about the people who are the top performers on the planet that I've been around is that they're able to rapidly change their state. They can go from zero to a hundred real quick, like sure. at any given moment. So if I'm going to go on camera, I don't want to just go on camera because I'm probably not going to be in the most energetic, uh, charismatic, powerful state that I well, can. Well, that's what you said when you came in here, because I've filmed a couple episodes before, yes. and you're like, well, this is no fair, you're already You're warmed, warmed up. up, this isn't fair, yeah. And so when I tell people who are filming something, I say, you're gonna throw away the first 10 minutes. So when you do it, you know, go and film a couple of fun videos yep. before you get into filming your course or whatever, because, especially back when I was not so great on camera, we would, we would film the chorus and then the guy would say, you know, we're gonna go back and film those first couple sessions. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm so tired. But he was right because you start off low energy and you gotta go. So most people, they, they struggle. They're stuck and they're struggling yes. with, with energy. They're like, I, you know, first of all, they're-, they're the, I, I've, I love I, it. I get tongue tied and I, one day I said struggle. I'm I like, love oh, it. they actually are stuck and struggling. So, so someone is like, they're struggling. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't talk to the phone. I have low energy and I feel really awkward. But there's, you can't use those excuses. You gotta flip around and go, well, what would, what would Jason do? What would Jason do in this situation right now? He, he'd somehow magically turn the energy on. Yeah, what do you do? Your, what can they do? Your state is 100% your responsibility right. at all times. So if I'm not in a good state, I gotta record videos, I just need 10 seconds and I will go, hur, hur, hur. <laughs> and I don't mean to be the first person to ever barked on your podcast, but that's all I'll do. And literally that's all it takes and I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm ready to go. So what we're looking for when you change state, the fastest way to do it is just a massive intense change in your physiology, which is a fancy way of saying, move your body in some different way, like, like your voice is an anchor. So if you just, you're like, all right, I'm gonna go on camera. Well, let me just talk extra loud for the next 10 seconds and just say a bunch of words that don't really mean anything, Gouda, Brussels sprouts, kale. But now <laughs> you're actually, you're, you're more warmed up. You're a little more free, you're a little more energetic, and now you're gonna take this energy going to camera. Like, we need to, we're, we're on camera, we need to be able to impact someone on the other side of the world, 8,000 miles away through a tiny screen. If your energy isn't good, you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to reach them, and now they're gonna have a less than stellar day because you didn't step up yourself. That's like when I was younger and more skeptical, you know, you, you see Brendan and guys, you know, people that you hang around with like, oh my gosh, why are they so energetic and stuff? But that's what people need. <laughs> they need it. They need that stuff so much because first, the, the enthusiasm overcomes any deficiencies and mm -hmm. maybe the message, but also it's like the other person is a lot of people aren't the self-starters, and so you have to show up and kind of start them up. Right? Yeah, and, and I think something really useful for a lot of people to understand is if you're a big Hollywood actor or you're Beyonce, then it is already assumed that your stage persona is not who you really are. Right. right. When Beyonce goes on stage, she calls it Sasha Fierce. Right. She is an anchor that she runs through and it, it's an identity shift. And now she, it's like she's playing a character and now she's Sasha Fierce on stage and Sasha Fierce can rock 100,000 people. Sure. Beyonce doesn't. Right. right. So when you go on camera, it's not the worst idea to have like your stage persona and then your real one. So if you're going on camera, you're like, this isn't how I really am. It's not. That's OK. We need we need you plus like 20 percent when you go on camera because everyone else at home is in this kind of. You know, meandering, just kind of bored state, looking for someone to explain. Or sloth state. Yeah. The, the way that I look at it is like, okay, know yourself. If you know yourself with awareness through yoga or meditation or whatever it is, or just good self-reflection and introspection, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can kind of assign yourself the character. Like I've always assigned myself the character of the preacher, yeah. right? The preacher. There's preacher Craig. And then I say, turn yourself up to an 11. Yeah. And when you do that, you're like, because I really kind of am the preacher. Like it's not like... Like if I was like to think of myself as like, you know, like the Rico Suave ladies man, like that's not me, you know? <laughs> and so even if I turned myself up to 11, it'd be ridiculous. Yeah. And people would know and it's not authentic, but it is authentic to be your best self and turn it up to 11, in mm -hmm. my opinion. And that's what people on the other side of the camera want. Because again, if people are watching your stuff, 
they're probably, in most cases, there's going to be more prospects than customers watching your stuff, so people that haven't bought. And they haven't bought because they haven't been given, overcome the inertia. They haven't had the energy of themselves. So you need to give them and transfer that energy. I think, I remember one time you said, like, sales, salesmanship is a lot of the transfer of Transfers energy. energy, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So walk, walk people through, because again, there's so many people watching who are just like, I wish I could be like, like Jason on video. You can, because it's totally. skill and, stu and, and, yes. and study. So it's, take us through that. Repetition is the mother like, of all learning. Like, it's repetition. You gotta get the reps in. And if, like, if you, we said it before, like, if you're not talking 60 minutes a day, then you need to do it. So all of my students, let's say they only talk 20 or 30 minutes a day in normal conversation. Well, then you need an extra 30 minutes today where you can just go on your phone and you'll just talk to the camera. And you can post it or you cannot post it, but it's the idea of practice. It, it is the great thing about doing podcasts, solo podcasts. Like if you had a podcast, and even if nobody listens, so like if you're going to be doing the talking, as Jason says, why not do the talking yes. and get it out there? Yes. And people will, people will listen to your fir first podcast and your 10th and go, wow, it's amazing. Wow, here's, here's a great lesson, actually. I did a 30-day selfie video challenge on yes. Instagram. Minute, minute long video. And I came from the world of body transformations, and back when we did the body transformation, I realized, okay, you cannot have a physical transformation without a mental transformation. And I was shocked at the end of the 30-day selfie challenge how many people just had massive improvements in their confidence. I'm mm -hmm. like, one minute a day for 30 days in front of your phone? Just imagine 60 minutes a day mm -hmm. for 30 days in front of your phone. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Now, here's the thing is that just to do the practice is not enough because the thing that was a huge game changer for you was when John Benson was over your shoulder. Sure. Expert advice we, and correction, we need, right? We need feedback. Yeah. Yes, we need feedback. So that's why, like, if you're going to record it all by yourself, 30 minutes practicing, that's fine. But you should be posting it so you know what do they like, what do they not like. Yeah. It's hard to get feedback from the marketplace, right? Um, one, one big thing I can say to this also is, like, don't reject yourself. Let the marketplace reject you. A lot of people, they'll look at the video that they just recorded and go, I don't like my nose or my <laughs> hair or my ears. I don't want to post this. You're rejecting yourself. No, put it out there. I'd much rather you put it out there and get some, some, some asshole somewhere to be like, your nose looks weird or something like that. That's so much better because... Well, one, you realize it doesn't matter. Right. And two, now you're not the one rejecting yourself. You're well, and, the marketplace. And that goes back to your dating world. Like so many guys were rejecting themselves by she not was, doing she anything. She won't like me. She won't want to talk to me. So I won't I do anything. Even, yeah, it's just an excuse. Like, no, no, no. Do not do, not do yourself the disservice of, of rejecting yourself. Let, let other people do it for you. That is a writer downer. If you remember nothing else from this show or the shows that Jason has been on is do not reject yourself. Because you see it, I see it. Yeah. I mean, people go, th they're 45 years old, they've rejected themselves for 30 years, and they're just finally overcoming that. Yeah. And, and, and it really hurts. You're not going to regret the times where you got rejected by other people. You're only going to regret the times where you rejected yourself. Absolutely amazing. All right, so let's transfer now to the nitty gritty. You're doing so much stuff on YouTube and Instagram. What is working? What is hot? What do you think is going to be next for you guys in this space? So I gave a talk uh, last week to about 50 real estate agents who all run seven-figure agencies. Oh, cool. uh, it was Roland Frazier. It was his group, actually. Oh, nice. It was, it was very cool. Closing table? Or yes, closing table. Yeah. yeah. It was a great group at the Ritz-Carlton in Dana Point. It was like, beautiful. Oh, sweet. Yeah. But this is what I told them, and it scared the crap out of a lot of them, and hopefully it'll scare the crap out of a lot of people listening here. I truly, truly believe when it comes to video, talking head is dead. So like talking head videos, if it's not dead, it's dying. Talking head, of course, being it's just someone's face and they're, they're sharing something with you. I know for sure. My Instagram TV videos, the talking head only, half the views of when it's not. Totally, yeah. And, and we all, so many of us who are already doing video, we we relegate ourselves to doing talking head because it's easier to do. I don't have to get other people. I can even do it on my iPhone. I can just get it done real quick. But people, like, like there's so much competition for your audience's eyeballs that they're just not going to sit through anything they think is boring. And you know what and most talking head stuff is? Somebody yelling at the other person. Right? Which, when does that happen in real life? Right, never. Right, you, like, if it was a real person, you wouldn't allow someone to just talk, talk, talk at you. Right. Now, like... What if you're talking and you're on, it's the video of you on stage talking to an audience, that's not a talking head video because there's all these people, there's an interaction going on. Right. So talking head is dead. What we're doing with all of our content, or we're attempting to do is everything has to be uh, interactive. Everything has to be dynamic, right? I remember you, about you, you talking about this like two or three years ago. You were like, man, I, you were like, from now on, I want to have all my stuff filmed as if like there's, you know, it's just regular conversation. Yes. 
and there's somebody there filming it because it that's that's what people want to do. They want to listen into a conversation between you and Robert Greene. Yes. They want to they want to be the third person at the table. Yes. They want to be the third person at, at like dinner. I had dinner last night with uh, Bedros and then this guy Van who sells gold and it was like the most amazing stories. And he's a really cool dude up in Long Beach. I'll introduce you to him. And like if somebody, I bet people would have paid a thousand dollars to sit there. For, mm -hmm. Because they're like, man, if I could just sit there and be the fly on the wall. Yes. And that's what you're kind of going for now. And that's why you're doing way more of these interviews, I guess. Yeah, way more of the interviews. It, I mean, there's also the benefit of like the networking part with all the interviews, which I like. Yeah. But yeah, that's why I'm doing interviews. Um, I'm doing more, more like man on the street type stuff. Okay. Like, I don't yeah. know if you've seen like my Instagram stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where I, well, I saw you. You're like advertising girls. for a man on the street to be in your videos. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no. Those are for different ones. Right? So I'm, that's the thing I'm doing is I'm bringing some of my Instagram audience members and we're going to record like dramatized coaching sessions. Okay. For But but it's, they're going to be fun ones. Right. So like uh, here's, so I got my, t I'll tell you exactly the strategy, right? I have my $10 a month thing, my weekly skills yeah, yeah. that I'm selling, right? And that's where I want everyone to start. So on Instagram, I was like, I could do a talking head video talking about how great it is, but no one cares and no one's gonna watch that. Well, what if instead we took people from my Instagram audience and what, what, like, what's the big idea on the skills thing? Well, it's like JC's the wizard and he's gonna tell you what to do to get your copy closing speaking up. And, and it works, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna embellish this, we're gonna dramatize this. So I'm gonna put on my Versace robe <laughs> and maybe get like a magic wand yeah, yeah. as a wizard, and we're gonna take an Instagram follower, 19 year old kid or something, and he's going to be at the mall trying to buy something expensive, and it's too expensive, and he can't afford it because he doesn't make enough money, and he's gonna look sad. And then Jason's gonna walk up next to him in the robe and the wand and go, well, what's the problem, young man? And he's gonna tell me, and I'm gonna whisper something in his ear, and da da da, -da and boom, before you know it, we're walking out of the mall, and he's got Louis Vuitton bags in his arms, and he's happy as gold, and that's the whole video. Yeah. And that's so much that, that demonstrates what I could say. I could say, listen, you can't buy the stuff you want now. Learn the high income skills. I'll show you. Now you can. No one believes that. No one wants to listen to a talking head. But if instead I just show you, you see the product in action, that's going to compel people a hell of a lot more and be a lot more engaging for content. Do you follow Greg O'Gallagher on Instagram? I do. Man, that guy's good. He's great. I mean, if there's anybody as good as you. He's it, great, yeah. And, and he brings on Kino Warriors. and he's So so he's basically done everything that you've described. You know, he's given the, a club. Yes. You're a Kino Warrior. Yep. You know, you've, you use the supplement, so you've got the BDE. You know, have you seen, yeah, yeah. You know what the BDE yeah, is, I right? Yeah, BDE. And, and then, you know, it's like, hey, there's a meetup, and there's this, and there's that. And everybody's labeled themselves. And, and I mean, first of all, his stuff is great, but he's also so good. And then... Because it's so often there's other people and all that stuff in, when he does do a talking head, when he slows it down and all of a sudden goes all Eckhart Tolle on people and like talks about the power now, people really get into it because it's so different mm -hmm. than what he normally does. And that's the same, same approach as with like Cardone is another guy that I watch. Because when you open up the story, like my problem is when people open my, open my stories, they're like, they know what they're getting. Mm -hmm. And that is the problem. It's like, oh, it's going to be a rerun of, of him, you know, talking head. So I'm, I'm doing stuff to not do that. But when you open up Cardone's or, or Greg's or yours, you're like, I don't know where he's going to be. I don't know what he's going to be doing. I don't know what kind of show is going to be inside the story. And that's the excitement. That's why people go back. And so if it's like Cardone in some other country or you know, it's going to be Cardone with the kids today or it's going to be Cardone just be like right up in your face, bro. And you got to go get the 10X, 10X, bro, 10X life. You know, and it's like, oh, OK, well, that was good enough because it's not normally like that. Yes. But if you're but if it's always the same thing over and over again, then you're screwed, right? Yes, yes. And I know we talked about Charlie Munger for a second and him and Warren have this thing where they say if an entire year passes where we don't forfeit one of our most dearly held ideas, we consider that a wasted year. Oh, I like that. It's wonderful. And I think with the Instagram story stuff, you find one thing that kind of works, you get comfortable with it, and then you never want to try anything else. I think the, the best advantage of Instagram stories for someone right now is to keep trying new stuff. One, because you'll- Daily experiment, you'll 365 find, yeah. experiment yeah. opportunities. You'll, you. you'll find new stuff that works, but at the very least, your audience will never know what to expect. And it's that unpredictability that keeps them watching. Like, I watch Grant all the time because I never know what the hell he's going to be. Or he's going to be gonna putting say. his kids in the freezer at the grocery store yes. and then putting that. He, he had a chokehold on Elena one day. I took a screenshot because <laughs> I was like, you do not post this on Instagram. Uh, it's not funny. But he did. He doesn't care. No. That's the great thing. He just does not care. And so many people with Instagram, they're like, oh, well, you know, every third post has to be a quote so that when somebody looks at my grid, that you know, it's picture, video, 
quote. And I was like, oh my gosh, if this is what you're thinking about in terms of Instagram, you're foolish because Grant Cardone will use that filter where it puts like the lace hat mm -hmm. on and the lipstick on. He'll put that on his main feed. Yeah. He doesn't care. And that's like, if you're gonna follow anybody for ideas, I mean, that's where I get so many of mine. So I'm, I'm consulting right now, or I'm having him consult my team is DRock right now. Okay. And Gary Vanderchuk's team. Got it. DRock runs all Gary's stuff. And the biggest thing that, one of the biggest things I've gotten from him so far is the importance of quantity over quality with all your social media. So yeah. they really believe- Cardone's big on the attention thing. And, and the 50 just, pounds of clay idea. The let's just produce as much as we possibly can of different stuff. Cause you're not like, you're not trying to find the perfect story, the perfect post, just post a ton of stuff of everything on all these different platforms and let the audience tell you what they like most and then take those parts and turn them into remixes yeah. for other types of content. Absolutely amazing. All right. So we're running out of time here. Recent quote on Instagram, you said trials are not del denials, delays kill dreams. And you've always said success, low speed. So what's the final message you want to leave people with here? I mean, that, that testing and, and just getting it out there is amazing. So lay us on. A final, uh, final message here from JC. So it's 2019 right now. Yeah. It's almost 2020. The entire world, most of it's on social media, the rest of it will be there in the next couple of years. If you, I love this quote I saw Grant say recently where he said, it's not who you know anymore, it's who knows you. Well, I saw that, yeah. And about the hairstylist. There's, but there's something about, in, like in the next few years, there's gonna be a certain group of people, top two or 3%, who are going to simply be known. Their content, like, will, like I'm noticing this effect now where people come up to me, I'm like, oh, are you in my course? No, I saw one of your ads a couple of years ago. And I'm like, this is, there's a, there's a long-term delayed effect of just being everywhere that, because right. there's the marketplace is only so big. So if you get the content out now, the ads out now, you push, you start putting all this stuff out now in a couple of years, your content will have reached every corner and crevice of the internet and social media. And that's gonna give you that KLT factor with people who they may be cold. You might be running ads to them two years from now, but they'll have seen some content from you two years ago. And there's something there that they've seen you before that allows the conversion to happen a lot happen at a higher clip. So if there's one thing I can say, it's get your fucking self out there now. Start publishing, start posting, go quality over quantity, uh, you know, like fail forward and just start posting, start putting yourself out there. You're gonna have such an advantage because I promise you 97% of the people listening to me right now, they won't do it. Right, exactly. They want people that will, will dominate. Yes. Absolutely amazing, my man. So listen. Jason will be taking this message to the next level at the Perfect Life Retreat November 8th and 9th in San Diego with Bedros, myself, Sharon, all the cool kids will be there. We'll see you there too, perfectliferetreat.com. That's it for the Empire Podcast Show with the first time, second timer, Jason Capital, all right? So go to iTunes, give us a five-star review. Go follow this kid on YouTube as well. I can still call him a kid, he's still 50 <laughs> years younger than me. And here's to another decade of dominance for you, my man. Awesome. So good. Peace out.